Forgive me, I'm a little, uh, a little disheveled. Uh, it's almost, uh, I was almost in a car accident on the way here tonight, uh, but uh, fortunately, at the last second, I managed to uh, uh, t change my mind. <laughs> Just learned around here that it's probably best not to use a turn signal. Just, uh, cause whenever I use one, everybody behind me just kind of takes it as a personal challenge. <laughs> hey, I think that dude's trying to get off on the next exit. <laughs> Bring it on! <sighs> How dare you try to get in front of me in a courteous manner? You, you stupid fetcher. Don't, don't get me wrong, I have, a, I have a beautiful, beautiful heart. I love people. Um, grew up, I grew up uh, in a religious family. Uh, you, you, you pick up some little idiosyncrasies uh, when you are uh, raised in a religious family, because like to this day, I cannot sit through a meeting without this uncontrollable desire to eat Cheerios from a small plastic bag. <laughs> Now, if you didn't know why that joke was funny, please find someone who did. And we have a special message that we will like to share with you. So. But no, I love people. In fact, I, I started doing stuff a couple years ago, uh, and you should, you should do this too. You should go raise your life and just, just thinking about it brings so much joy to my heart. What happened was I was, I was driving down the road and I saw someone on the side of the road and they needed some help, but I didn't stop and help. I just kept on going. I just kept on going. Didn't even put any two, two miles, second, nothing to it, right? I get down the road and I start thinking about it. That was a, a woman with a couple kids, just need help with a tire, and I didn't stop to help. I mean, I was far enough away that it would have been awkward to turn around, <laughs> right? But it bothered me. And, so I thought, well, never, never shall this opportunity ever pass me by ever again. And so now, in fact, did it, did, did it today. Whenever I see a fellow human being on the side of the road in need of help, regardless of the situation I am in, every single time, I hope someone stops and helps them. <laughs> I feel strong. I'll, sometimes I'll even slow down and make eye contact with them. <laughs> Just so they know that my thoughts and prayers are going out in their behalf. I'm manifesting for them. They say the greatest service, the greatest joy you find in, in, in life is uh, serving your fellow man. Why well, found something uh, even greater? Allowing others that opportunity. <laughs> well, I do love people. I try to turn every situation, I mean, I try to make a positive, happy one. And, um, but sometimes it, it's not, it, it doesn't go, uh, so well. Case, case in point, I was at Walmart the other day, and I know there's anti-Walmart people in this world, and I want you to know that if, if you hate Walmart, I hate you. <laughs> and if there's anybody, <laughs> if there's anybody in this room right now who works at Walmart, I want to take this opportunity right 
I want to take this opportunity right now to say to you, thank you. Thank you for giving up your hopes and dreams. <laughs> to help me save 15 cents on a box of Nutter Butters. Thank you. Your sacrifice has not gone unnoticed. What? So anyway, there I am. I'm in, I'm, in the, I'm in the Walmart. I'm in the dog food aisle because I'm getting the jerky treats because they're cheaper than the regular jerky. You know, if, you, if you start them young, the kids can't tell the difference. Dad, we want the chewy ones. Okay. So there I am. Fellow human being there, and I felt like I should say something, you know, you know, because you know, fellow carbon-based life form, right? And you just we're sharing in the same space, right? I just wrote a little pleasantries, nothing but love, nothing but love was intended. But in retrospect, if I could, I would take this back. <laughs> but nothing but love was intended when I said, "Ma'am, you must be so excited. When does the baby do?" <laughs> <laughs> that guy was pissed. <laughs> so many people. Then there was this other time, and I'm not bragging, just happens to be where I was. I was in Sheridan, Wyoming. Thank you. I'll share this with you. I was driving my minivan, because I know you're looking at me going, uh, Rodney, a man of your same caliber, drives a minivan. Oh yes, yeah, so I keep one in the fleet. Because <laughs> I got to do uh, some keep ba the ladies uh, back up off me. <laughs> Trust me, I know what I'm dealing with. Ever since I got up here, you've been staring at me thinking to yourself, wow, this looks like the loser cousin of Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Some of the older people are staring at me thinking, he looks just like Kenny Rogers at the time he decided to get plastic surgery. <laughs> he looks like Santa Claus gave up. <laughs> Sorry there, I'm getting a, I get the look of petroleum from a ride. And they got a little store there, and it's a store, beverages and snacks. I'm a big fan of the beverages and the snacks. <laughs> so I started heading into the store, okay? And uh, as I'm walking, it's a long, big parking lot. Wyoming, they got a lot of space. They got, everybody's driving, you know, uh, tractors, and they got, everybody's got trailers, so they're all coming to town for provisions. <laughs> so all space. So there's a distance uh, from the, from the liquid petroleum pumps to the, to the store, right? So I'm walking, I'm walking to the store, and here's what happened. This dude is coming out of the store at the same time, right? He's got a couple things in his arms, and he looks over at me as he's standing there, and he just stops holding the door, with, you know, with, the, with his butt. <laughs> Which I might add, it's perfectly suited for. <laughs> if you ever get in an argument about intelligence, intelligent design versus evolution. You throw that one out at him, boom, you win checkmate. You ain't coming up with that by chance. So the dude sees me and I see him, you know, it's kind of an awkward moment. I'm kind of like, you know, really he's just looking at me. So I had to do that kind of weird so, you, you know, you're walking, and then you got to look like... You kind of act like you're running, but you're not really running. In fact, you actually go slower than if you just kept walking. But it sort of lets you know it's sort of the international sign of, if I could run, I would do it now. All right, so I'm, I'm scurrying, scurrying over towards him. All right, also, you understand something about me. I'm very secure with who I am as a man. Uh, that I can handle uh, another man holding a door for me. Very secure. In fact, I'm so secure through who I am as a man, I can give another man a hug. A good hug. Not that weird, 
handshake and tap on the shoulder thing we do, that's just gay. <laughs> or sometimes we do the two taps and you're out hug. Two taps, quit touching me hug, you know what I'm saying? Not me, two taps, I go in tighter. <laughs> if I'm feeling it from the dude, I'll lift him up and pop his back. <laughs> that's how secure I am. So I get, I get up, I get, I get to his door, right, right, and I, and, I, and, I, and I go, hey, right, because that's what we do, dude. So I just, hey, that's all we need. Everything we need to say, right? Just, hey, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, if you had time, I'd go, you know, come fishing with me. Well, I really like to. We're just passing through. Yeah, well, uh, I got a nice boat. Hey, that's pretty cool. Is that was that your boat over there? Yeah, that was my boat. Uh, that's pretty cool. All that was. Uh, <laughs> All right, because it's just because if it's two ladies, it gets weird. You know what I mean? It's got to turn it into a thing. All right, you know what I mean? Because one lady's like, <clears throat> "Hey, I just uh, wanted you to know that I really appreciate that you took your time uh, to wait for me and stand here and hold the door because you didn't have to hold the door because I was so far away that you could have just kept going and you didn't have to stop. But obviously you got things going on in your life and you got all your arms are full of stuff and your family's probably waiting for you and you just took a moment to hold the door for me and I just want you to know that even though it wasn't, it's not a big thing, it is a big thing to me that it's just because it's the little things that really matter and I just want you to know that I totally and truly appreciate what you've done. <laughs> well, I want you to know that I truly appreciate that you took our time to appreciate what I was doing because I'm not trying to make any big statements. I'm not trying to break down the patriarchy or anything. I'm just trying to be a nice person. And people just need to be nice to people. And don't, people are just so mad about everything and all the time. And I just think just little tight pleasantries, just being nice to each other is what we really need to do. <laughs> That is so true. I just completely understand exactly what you're saying. I think that we need to show the world that be, there are still nice people in this world. Would you let me take a picture of you? Can we take a picture? Let's get a picture. Just lean in real. That is perfect. I'm going to post it. I'm going to put it on my Instagram. It's just... Um, now, what's your name again? Robin. Okay. Oh my goodness, you know Denise from Denver? You know Denise from Denver? Well, of course I know Denise from Denver. We've been friends forever. We used to do Lou LaRue together, and then we got lots of stuff, and the people weren't buying the Lou LaRue, because it's like once you have, you know, 10 or 10 pieces of Lou LaRue, you pretty much have everything you're ever going to need from Lou LaRue. And so then, we, so then we decided, you know what we should do? We should do the candles. And so we started doing the, um, we just started doing the New England candles, because uh, they were really nice, but they have to, they came out the three wicks, and I just didn't understand why you have to do the three wicks, because they're already strong enough with one wick, and then you do the three wicks, it's just too strong, then you gotta open the window, and then what's the point of having a candle if you're just gonna open the window? And then, but if you only light one of the wicks, it burns down off about one side, and then it gets scatty wampus, and it kind of ruins the aesthetic of the candle all to begin with, and it just kind of defeats the purpose if you have just three wicks. <laughs> telling people, I don't understand the three wicks. How they could be out with five wicks. That's just crazy. So I started doing scentsy candles. <gasps> scentsy candles, that's what we've been doing. I love the scentsy candles, because you can get more variety with just the wind. Wi <laughs> or, you know, something like that. I'm oh, sorry, this is a beautiful experience I had. Uh, this is about a year, it was about a year ago. Uh, I was going to go visit some friends of mine uh, in, in Southern California. If you're not familiar, here's California. <laughs> they live uh, right about here. <laughs> and so, uh, they're Tongans. They're, Tong they're Polynesian Tongans. And I mentioned, I mentioned uh, the Polynesian because there's, awful, uh, there's also an African a tribe that goes by Tongan. They didn't know each other you know, long ago, so there's no copyright violations or anything. They just <laughs> try to work it out. But I just, I just didn't want you to not have any confusion. <laughs> so I, get, I, get, I drive down there to their house and I'm trying to drive, pull in. 
they start coming walking out. And we think, oh, they're coming to meet me. But they're, they're actually on their way to a street festival. Right? In fact, I, I go walking up to them, and they come up to me, right? And they were like, <clears throat> hey, uh, Rodney, we're on our way uh, to the street festival. Do you think that you would like to come with us to the street festival? And I was, I was all like, well, I, I didn't have uh, any other plans. <laughs> so sure, I'd love to go with you to the street festival. That'd be awesome. You come with us? Well, do you want to? Do you want to take two cars? Do you want to drive over? Or you want to just uh, ride with us? <laughs> well, I, I have been driving all day. <laughs> <laughs> you always make me laugh. <laughs> well, I think going with you would be uh, pretty cool. You know, see if. It's a room and probably it's a parking, just one car. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that, but you're right, it would be better to just stay one car. But we're gonna have to move some stuff so you can sit in the back. Are you okay sitting in the back? Well, I've been sitting in the front all day, so I guess, <laughs> you know, I'm up for a change. That's why we like having you around, because uh, you're so funny. <laughs> In sync. <laughs> so we get there, and there's, we get, we get there, and there's, of course, more, there's more Tongans, and then there were, uh, and then there were uh, Samoans. They're also uh, uh, Polynesian, but they're, they're really closely re related, like a long time ago, they were like together and then there was a thing and another knot. And there's no African equivalent to Samoan, they're just, they got the name all clear themselves. The, now the easiest way to tell the Samoans from the Tongans is by the way they make macaroni salad. In case you're wondering. But we get there, okay, so they're there. And then there's people, there's people from all over the world, all over the world, right? There's uh, people from Thailand, the Philippines, uh, Cambodia, Laos, Japan, China, all over South America, Brazil, Peru, uh, Colombians, right? And then well, Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans uh, there's a, uh, Mexicans. There was a lot of Mexicans. Uh, okay, it was, it was, it was mostly Mexicans. <laughs> okay, but my point, my point is is that nobody cared where anybody was from, nobody cared uh, what anybody's political affiliation or religious affiliation was, nobody cared where you were from, it was just, you nobody know, cared what color of skin you were, we were just dancing, listening to music and eating each other's food and just having a great old time, and we were there just having a fun celebration because we were there to celebrate the only race, and that is the human race, my friends, and that's what we were doing, and it was a proud, proud moment because I was like, this is what America's about coming together, the best of the whole world, just getting together, this is what it's about. Very proud moment. It was also at this moment that I realized that I uh, was the only white guy there. <laughs> it was a little humbling, because I think you can all relate, just that sudden realization that uh, well, I guess I'm in charge. <laughs> now you fellas got a permit for that flame? Open flame. Just here to help. Now I'd like to point out that there are two groups of people who are offended by that joke. The first group is white supremacists, because that's who the joke is about. The other group are people who are mentally deficient that didn't comprehend that the joke was about white supremacists. So, either way, uh, you're the problem.
And at one, one time, I remember, I used to, I love going to church. Love church. There was one time, five, there was a lady at church found out what I did for a living. And she was like, um, you know, Brother Norman, the scriptures teach us that um, loud laughter is not approved. <laughs> and I said, well, Sister Johnson, if you've ever seen me perform, you know that's not a problem. <laughs> I used to have a really cool Sunday school teacher, right? But he was a little, he was a little confident. It was a little overconfident sometimes, right? And one time he forgot his lesson, so he just, he comes in, he's like, all right, boys, tell me what we're gonna do. Uh, you just go ahead and throw out any question you have about anything about uh, life in general, uh, anything you want about church, anything, and I'm gonna give you a straightforward, honest answer right now. We're all just kind of like, Excuse me. Uh, yes, uh, Brother Norman. Okay. Um, okay. Is God is God omni not omnipotent? Well, yeah. Okay. Is, is God omniscient? Yeah. Okay. Well, if God is all powerful and He's all knowing, would He not know everything we're going to do before we do it? And then, if He allows us to do it, even though He has the power to stop us from doing it, if He allows us to do it, would not then anything uh, that we do then uh, become God's will that's making uh, free agency an illusion? <laughs> Why don't we just go ahead and play hangman? <laughs> and uh, later on, I took I studied philosophy. Because I want to find more, I can get more answers. So for, I went to college to study philosophy. It was, uh, it was a little weird. It was the first day of class, right? Teacher comes walking in and goes, <clears throat> Perhaps the most important thing that you can learn in this class is that there are no absolute truths in the universe. Back there, like. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Hey. Uh, well. Okay. If okay. If there if there are no absolute truths, and then you make the statement that there are no absolute truths. <laughs> what the statement that there are no absolute truths? You be an absolute truth. <laughs> Thus negating the idea that there are no absolute truths. <laughs> Perhaps we should just play hangman. <laughs> then I had, this, I had this other class where all we talked about for first first week we was uh, we just we talked about chairs. Not like how to build a chair or anything constructive or useful about the chair, but the idea that the chair that you're currently sitting on is not actually a chair, because that chair has not always been a chair, but in order for it to be a chair, it always has to be a chair. Therefore, it's only in a temporary state of representing a chair, because the idea of a real chair is an idea of a chair, and that's the real chair being the chair, and that this is just a physical manifestation of the idea of the chair, because the idea of the chair is a real chair, so this chair is not really a chair. <laughs> for a week. <laughs> and then at the end of the, the, the week, we come walking in and uh, a, he, uh, the uh, professor is like, okay, uh, we're gonna have a quiz and uh, just take out a sheet of paper. And uh, as we've been discussing about the existence of a chair, uh, you need to defend uh, your own existence. <laughs> And they're thinking, man, maybe it's not too late to go change my degree to something real, like, you know, English. <laughs> so I just start thinking about it, and then I finally just got up. I got up and I started walking out, and the teacher, the uh, professor, said, hey, hey, excuse me, where are you going? And I was just like,
Uh, pardon me? Who are you talking to? <laughs> Who's talking to you? Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> well, I guess I got an A. <laughs> I'll, I'll share this with you. I, you know, I don't understand why everybody gets so bent out of shape and uh, stuff anymore. Uh, and, and I was, I was actually thinking about this myself the other day. I was like, "Hey, hey, Rodney, why is it that you are such a well-adjusted adult?" <laughs> and I think it was because my childhood. Because it's not easy till now, but I was a fat kid growing up. It was not easy being a fat kid when I was growing up. Now it's easy to be a fat kid, I know, because I got three of them. <laughs> right, fat kids now, they show up to the school, it's like, oh, we love you for, for who you are, because you bring a very special spirit to the group. And you bring diversity. Diversity is so important because we take your diversity and it makes all of us more diverse. <laughs> But most importantly, by you being bigger than the other children, you make them feel better about their bodies. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, you get called tubby, chubby, fat, but wide load. Yeah, teachers back then. You know, like, a little different. No, I had to go and shopping as a fat kid because the only place we could go was Sears. Yeah, you want to you impress the ladies? You're some husky. <laughs> it's the only place you can find a pair of boys' pants with a 36-inch waist with a 14-inch inseam. <laughs> but the worst thing for us fat kids was the playgrounds. They were horrifying. I mean, if you go to the playgrounds now, everything well-built, low to the ground, easily accessible for every single child. We're set up according to feng shui standards. His name's... There's a nice chi energy flowing around in there. <laughs> Bright cheerful colors everywhere so that every child can resonate from all seven chakras. <laughs> Antibacterial coatings on every surface so the little Timmy starts nodding on the bars, let him go, it's good for his gums. <laughs> but not my playgrounds, no. My playgrounds, when they built this stuff, it was built by a bunch of old dudes who wanted to teach you a lesson. <laughs> and made everything a stainless steel. You could not look directly at the playground equipment during daylight or you'd go blind. So, yeah. During the winter, you had to double layer because if your exposed skin touched the metal, it would stick. During the summer, you had to find a stupid kid to go down the slide first to see if he would burn. Hey, it's only the second degree, keep your knees up, let's go. And these slides aren't around anymore. They all got taken down because of OSHA standards and FAA flight patterns. <laughs> these things were 135 feet in the air. You had to go on the ladders on a 91 degree angle. It had an American standard on there, and if you slipped on the way up, you had that imprinted on your forehead for a week. <laughs> hey, I'm learning Braille. <laughs> then you get to the top of the slide, and you. This is for us fat kids. Because if we could actually make the climb, in order for us to go down, we had this horrifying situation that we, we had to go sideways. Because you could only get one cheek into the channel. Plus you had to keep one of your legs free to scissor kick to keep your momentum going. You didn't want to get wedged in because then they had to bring the jaws of life to get you out. Then you get down to the bottom of this thing, four and a half foot drop onto asphalt. In fact, we had monkey bars, 19 feet of Durepex over asphalt. That's why when I was growing up, nobody had ADHD because you had to stay focused. This concludes uh, my presentation. <laughs>
Hello and welcome uh, to the uh, end of the video. I hope you had a good time, because uh, I had certainly a good time uh, performing for you. And I'd just like to point out that obviously you are horrible with money and you should not be trusted with it. So just give uh, all me, all of your money uh, to me and your life uh, will be better. Okay, that's... Okay, we're done. Okay, let's go. We're... Whenever... Okay, you can stop now.